Sri Krishna Chaitana. How many of you know the Mangala Charan, the whole thing? You know Mangala Charan? The whole thing. Though not the one we s normally say, but the entire. No? Nobody knows Mangala Charan. Okay, I was going to do Mangala Charan, but it's nice when everybody is connected. All right, we'll do the short, short version then. Om Agyan Timirandasya Ganajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmelitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Swapadanti Kam Pande Ham Shri Guru Shri Utapade Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Si Rupam Sagrajata Sahagana Ragana Tam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitam Scha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Svade Vrishabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Taruvischa Kripa Sindhu Paevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasari Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So, um, I guess the most appropriate uh, Topic is uh, Narottam Das Thakur, which was his disappearance day yesterday, the fifth. But we didn't get a chance to. Did anybody speak about him? No. Such a great soul, so we should give a little time to Narottam. Um, Maum Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine, Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirasesa Sunyavadi Pastyatyade Satarine. As we have understood from the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, that Lord Chaitanya uh, always look, took the opportunity to have kirtan. Lord Chaitanya loved Kirtan. Lord Chaitanya inspired Kirtan. Lord Chaitanya danced in Kirtan. He never, you never hear too many pastimes of him leading Kirtan, but he was always dancing. <laughs> because he would like to dance and go into ecstasy. Because when you dance, it actually makes you feel happy just by dancing. And then the, it becomes easier and more natural to go into what we say elements of greater and greater happiness. Lord Chaitanya was traveling with Lord Nityananda in the area of West ba East Bengal, and they came across one river called the Padma River. Lord Chaitanya stopped and in great ecstasy start calling very loudly, Naratam, 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 over and over again. Lord Nityananda had said to him, many times before you have also called out the name of Tar Naratam, but none of us know who this Naratam is. Who are you referring to? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, you know my heart, my heart, is Kirtan. So soon a great personality will appear and he will revolutionize the style of Kirtan. 
So Lord Chaitanya actually predicted soon that this great personality will appear on the planet. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disappeared in the year 1534 and Naratam Dastakur appeared in the year 1535, one year later. Well, Lord Chaitanya, after speaking to Lord Nityananda, decided to take bath in the Padma River. And so he did. And while he was taking bath, the entire river started to become turbulent. And the river started to really become turbulent. The river was becoming a little curious. How is this? So Lord Chaitanya spoke to the personification of the Padma River. He said, I'm investing in your waters, my Krishna Prem. And soon there will be a great personality. He will come. And he will bathe in your waters. When he does, I will give him this Krishna Prem that I am leaving. And Padma responded, How will I know who that is? And Lord Chaitanya said, Well, when he bathes, your waters will also become turbulent. <laughs> so then Lord Chaitanya finished his bath and went on. Not too right after Lord Chaitanya left, as we mentioned, a great soul appeared to one prince. It's actually, it was a king. His name was Krishna Dat. His good, good wife was Narayani. And there was another son in the family named Purushottam. And now another son was born. And so he was given the name, of course, not actually not right away, because name, there's a name-giving ceremony that comes along with after the child is born. So now, after some time, it was time for both the name-giving ceremony and the first grains, you know, in the Vedic culture, when the uh, girl is about five months and the boy is about six months, there is a ceremony called uh, Anukut, or an, no, I'm not an Anukut, but Ana, Anaprast, Anaprast, which is the grain giving ceremony. The child takes grains for the first time before he's on mother's milk. And then, the ceremony was arranged. Now Krishna Dad, he was a great king. At least he was a king of that area. And so he had much, much influence. So he called all the people from many, many, all the villages around to come to this ceremony to honor his son during the first grain ceremony. And so people came from everywhere and there was great amounts of uh, arrangements made. Much boga was secured. And there was a lot of decorations, and there were singers and dancers. In other words, Krishna Dat, his father wanted to have a real grand ceremony for this uh, grain giving ceremony. How many of you have been to a grain giving ceremony? No, really? I've done so many of them. <laughs> I've fed so many kids. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting ceremony. Uh, when it's done properly, it's really quite auspicious and very pleasant to be. I've done some quick ceremonies where we have just the grains are ready and the child is there and the parents are there and we just go through the motions. But that's all right. Sometimes that's all that can be arranged. But when they have a priest with chanting the mantras, because there's a whole series of mantras so now the ceremony is about to begin. Now we also have to remember that Naratam Das was a very special child. He never cried. Never once in his life, even as a little baby, he did he ever cry. It's never, you see, uh, babies never cry. Babies usually always cry. <laughs> Prabhupada was giving a lecture one time. And he was talking about how in this uh, world... One has to be expert in dovetailing the things of this world in the service of the Lord. So as he was talking, there was, of course, the, 
Devotees had their children sometimes at the lecture. So one child started, Meow! when Prabhupada was crying, was talking. So, of course, Prabhupada would immediately stop talking when the baby was like that, and then he would wait for the mother to take the child out. So Prabhupada stopped, and the mother got the signal, take the child out. So she left with the child, and Prabhupada said, yes, somehow or other, you can engage everything in this world in Krishna's service except that sound. <laughs> Prabhupada used to know how to make things light. <laughs> But Krishna, uh, Naratam, he, he never cried. So the ceremony is about to begin, and many holy people are there, many royal people, so many different kinds of people. So the, prin the principle is the first grains are given by the father. So his father came, and with the sweet rice in hand, he came up to Naratam to give him the grains. But little Naratam, turned his face in the other direction. He refused. And then his father tried to, again, give him the grains, but every time he wouldn't take it. Now this is really inauspicious. When the child is supposed to take the grains and it doesn't happen, something is wrong. But there was one sadhu there, he was an old Brahmin. He said to the king, He's not going to eat that because it's not prasadam. <laughs> Go offer it to your deities. So they took the prasadam, offered it to their deities, and came back. And again, the father offered the grains, and Naratam immediately took it. And from that day on, they only gave him maha prasadam. <laughs> he was only six months old, so... This is how great this personality was at such an early age. He grew up, he heard about Lord Chaitanya. As he was growing up, many of the uh, sadhus in the area would come to see him, and they would talk about Lord Chaitanya, about Srinivasacharya, about other great saints, Lord Nityananda. And so he developed an attachment and sometimes even a great feelings of separation from Lord Chaitanya. And many times he would even cry in unhappiness, thinking that, oh, I'm so unfortunate, I never got the chance to associate with Lord Chaitanya. Now, but he would love to hear the narrations of the pastimes of the Lord and other devotees, and then he also had many books as he was growing up. He was reading and studying. He became a, actually a genius and a scholar. One time, Lord Nityananda appeared to him in the dream and said, leave home and go to the river Padma. <laughs> so in that dream, Lord Nityananda was very affectionate to him and actually embraced him. When he woke up, he was in ecstasy. But it was a problem to leave home because his parents were always concerned. They could see he wasn't happy. His unhappiness was simply a separation from the Lord. But they were thinking, we need to get him married. And then that was the clue to go on, to leave home. <laughs> so... Uh, his mother and father would keep him with guards, just like was with Raghunath Das Goswami. So one time his father had to go away on business and his mother was there and he tricked his mother into letting him go out. And when he did, he left home. And then he traveled and finally came to the Padma River. He took his bath in the Padma River and as soon as he did, the river started to become turbulent. And at that time, Something miraculous happened. He has a very dark complexion, but his complexion changed, and now he was like golden color, just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Krishna, the Krishna Prema that Lord Chaitanya left in the, into the water entered into his body, 
and he became transcendentally golden. <laughs> right after that, Lord Chaitanya appeared to him in a dream and said, go to Vrindavan. <laughs> of course, there are many, to speak about his whole life would take at least an hour and a half, maybe two hours, seriously. So I'll highlight some of the main pastimes. Uh, Narutam Das Thakur, he was, he became well known by everyone. And even those that didn't meet him, they had heard about him. Janabhadevi said when she met him for the first time, you will make the whole world Krishna conscious. Blessings from the wife, the internal potency of the Supreme Lord Janabhadevi, she gave him that blessing. Of course, before when he came to Vrindavan, he was met by uh, the devotees of the Lord, headed by Gopinathacharya and others. And then Jiva Goswami was there. Later on, he went to Jajigram and met Srinivasacharya. He became good friends with uh, Shamananda Goswami also, Shamananda Pandit. And together they traveled with the books of the Goswamis to take it from Vrindavan to Navadvip to have them uh, copied. There was one copy of each of the Goswamis' books, and that was the only copy under the care of Jiva Goswami. Jiva Goswami arranged for the three of them. And of course, that's a long story, but centers around mostly about Srinivas Acharya, how the books were stolen by one king, and then Srinivasacharya realized who had done it, and so he stayed back. And he sent Narutam Das Thakur away to go to Ketigram. And then uh, he sent Shamananda to go to Utkala in the area of Arissa. Both of them, he told them to preach Krishna consciousness there. Uh, after leaving, Srinivas and uh, Shamananda, um, he had another dream, and in the dream, he was told to go to Jagannath Puri. So the word came to the residents of Puri, a great soul would be coming. And soon as he came to the outskirts of Puri, one old Brahmin met him and uh, welcomed him nicely and took him to Narendra Sarovar. And he, there he took bath. That was the place that Lord Chaitanya would perform his pastimes. If you've been to Jagannath Puri, there's a place called Narendra Sarovar. It's a tank. It's a bathing gat. Lord Chaitanya would perform his pastimes with his devotees there. After that, uh, three uh, Gopinathacharya, Kuntaya, what was his name? Kalakuntaya and uh, Siki Mahiti. They were walking together, and all of a sudden, all three of them, at the same time, had this feeling of ecstasy that overcame them. And then they understood, oh, yes, we believe that this is due to the fact that Naratam has arrived. And this was a fact. Later on, they met Naratam Das Thakur and took him to some of the temples in Jagannath Puri and ultimately to go to the Jagannath temple also, where he received the garland of Lord Jagannath and the prashad of Lord Jagannath. And of course, he didn't stay in Jagannath Puri too long, because again, while he was in Jagannath Puri, he couldn't sleep. Although they gave him a nice room to sleep in and everything, he was his mind was just overwhelmed with ecstasy and love of God. Sometimes that happens and you can't sleep. <laughs> So he was in that ecstasy. And so again, a dream came, and this time, go to Ketarigram. So he went again to, on his way to Ketarigram, but when he did, he uh, stopped in the area of Navadvip and went Manhattan to Sringananda Brahmachari, who gave him a tour of the entire, what we say, the places where we go when we do uh, Navadvip Mandala Parikram, he, just like Jiva Goswami was taken around by Nityananda Prabhu, so uh, Narutam was taken around by uh, 
Nishringanandana Brahmachari. So after meeting, seeing the house of Sachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra, of course he fell into ecstasy seeing that house. And everyone he, everywhere he met, all the great souls would welcome him and honor him. And he was so happy. Uh, he met uh, Narahari Sakar, who was in great ecstasy in separation of Lord Chaitanya. Because after Lord Chaitanya left, many of his associates couldn't uh, endure the separation. So one by one they were leaving the planet. This happens in the great souls when other great souls who are they very close to start to leave, they don't see any reason to stay anymore. Or their ecstasy and love of God is so strong that they cannot maintain that separation, so they want to leave. So finally, after traveling somewhere, he came to the area of Ketu Gram. But before he got there, there was one rich merchant who he met, and the merchant said, I have a go-down, and in this go-down is a beautiful deity of Vishnu Priya. But I can't go down in that go-down because there are so many snakes there, and it's very dangerous. Narantam thought about it, and he said, I will go. No, you should not go. Oh, I will go. And he went into the go-down. The go-down is an area of storage that is below the ground where they keep all kinds of supplies. So he went down there and he came out with a beautiful deity of Vishnu Priya and I believe one other deity. When he came out, all the snakes also came out and they all left. <laughs> Soon he arrived in the area of Ketri Gram and this was a very special time. Janavi Devi had organized the first Gaur Purnima festival 50 years after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya. And she arranged these big, big celebrations for all the devotees to come together and worship Lord Chaitanya. And there was supposed to be a deity installation of six sets of Radha Krishna deities. And of course, Naratam Das Thakur came with another set of deities. And so there were all these deities for installation, and that was the beginning of the program. Devotees had come from Navadvip, devotees had come from Vrindavan, devotees had come from Jagannath Puri. Thousands of those devotees that were still left after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya. Uh, Santosh Dat, who was the cousin of Naratam Das Thakur, who was also quite wealthy, he sponsored the whole festival. He bought all the Volga, and he, they had to build a house just to put the Volga in. There was so much Volga. <laughs> And then he built residence in quarters for all the devotees. He had it built. He paid all the expenses and made all the arrangements for all the expenses. I mean, he's, he exhausted his whole treasury. There was nothing left just to put on this festival. And, of course, Srinivasacharya, uh, of course, Naratam Dastakur, Ramachandra Kaviraj, Janavi Devi and all the devotees who were left after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya. They all came together for this wonderful celebration. Now in this celebration, Naratam Das Thakur performed the deity installation and there was a big grand for the first day they worshipped the six sets of deities with installations. The second day they began Kirtan and they asked Naratam Das to Thakur to lead. He had developed a new style of kirtan which was called Goran, Goran, Hati. Goran Hati. It says, devotees say, that uh, Naratam Das Thakur's style of kirtan is the Manipur style of kirtan. Hmm. You see, Srubdhamadar Goswami, from our Srubdhamadar Goswami who departed from us many years ago, he was from that area of the world, and many times he would bring the Manipur dancers and kirtaniers on tour all around. I remember when they went to Mayapur, we were there and we were watching them. And have you ever seen them perform? Yes? No? They jump, they twist, they have mudangas in their hand, and they jump up in the air and spin. They do flips. 
they roll on the ground. The instruments never touch the ground, although they do. It's it's just an, it's and it's it's a beautiful style of kirtan and dance combined together. This is one of their ways to dance. And if you see the ladies, the, the girls, they do have this uh, sari that is unusually. It looks like a a lampshade. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of it. It's like it comes like this, and it's. It goes around them, like goes out and around, just like a barrel or something. One th one time they made they made outfits for the deities in Jag in uh, Mayapur, and and all the gopis, including Radharani, they had these outfits. It was so beautiful. I remember it was right after Subhadra had brought his troop there. So he began his kirtan. And Naratam had a small pair of cartels. There were many devotees ready for kirtan. There were 14 Murdangas and seven cartel players. <laughs> and so Naratam started off very slowly, very sweetly, with great devotion, and started to sing. After some time, he started to dance very slowly and gracefully while he was singing. And then the clue came. Now the Murdangas chimed in, the cartels chimed in. And Naratam Das was really focused. His heart and mind was just absorbed in chanting the holy names of the Lord. And he led the kirtan so beautifully and so systematically. The kirtan went on and on and started to build. More and more energy started to come and devotees were becoming more and more happy. Finally the devotees were becoming ecstatic and Naratam was so fixed on leading and dancing at the same time. And everyone was, was singing and playing to their full capacity. And finally, not finally, but at one point, a very amazing, unique, one-time event happened. Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, Sri Vas, and all of the associates of Lord Chaitanya who had left the planet all personally appeared in the kirtan. It wasn't a dream, it wasn't a vision. They were personally there and they were dancing <laughs> and dancing. When everyone saw that, their hearts and minds just skyrocketed to unlimited heights of ecstasy. And Lord Chaitanya and, his, and all the devotees were just dancing and singing to Naratam's Tasta course, beautiful kirtan, and this kirtan went on and on. It's described in Naratam Vilas, the details of what was happening in this kirtan. It was mad. They were rolling on the ground. They were crying. They were getting up. They were falling. They were singing. Lord Chaitanya was, was just inspiring everyone to go higher and higher. It looked like it was going to explode. <laughs> It was too much. Everybody was just overwhelmed with so much happiness that they couldn't even sing anymore. <laughs> they were, it was an amazing kirtan. It went on for a, quite a while, too. It didn't just appear and disappear. And many of the devotees who were there saw their relatives who had disappeared. Achyutananda saw his father, Advaita Acharya, and Raghunanda Thakur saw his father Mukunda. All of them had appeared with Lord Chaitanya in this ecstasy of dance. And he's going to close the curtains. Isn't he a rascal? <laughs> we shouldn't call Pujaris a rascal, but sometimes. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya is still dancing in Kirtan. What are you closing the curtains for? I guess he's he's in the mood of duty. <laughs> okay, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki, Sri Panchatattva ki, Gaur Primanande. And finally, as the kirtan got to the heights where it couldn't go any higher, something happened. 
Lord Chaitanya disappeared. That was perfect timing. He closed the curtains at the right time. And Lord Chaitanya and all the associates who had appeared in the kirtan, they all disappeared. And then there was just crying and the mood of separation became so strong. Finally, after some time, the kirtan ended. Everyone was just overwhelmed with, uh, with just uh, uh, ecstasy. Soon after that, Janava Devi arranged a holy festival where they were throwing colors on each other. After that, there was a grand feast. Janava Devi cooked the feast, and she had many helpers. And a, the feast was so huge and so big. You read it in Naratam Vilas that the devotees were just feeding the other devotees, and devotees were just so they were just in ecstasy eating the prashad. It was so this was cooked by Janava Devi herself. She arranged for the cooking. And she did mostly all the cooking. And then she served with 22 of her assistants. And they served all the devotees there. There were at least a thousand devotees. And then after she served everyone, she cooked and served everyone. And everyone was just so full that they were just laughing. <laughs> and so happy tasting this wonderful prashad. And then... She sat down the servers and her personally started, she by herself, she started to serve all the servers. And then she kept serving. Then Srinivas Thakur, he became a little concerned. He said, he said, Janava Devi, please sit down and take prasad. And he was very strong. And she said, okay. <laughs> because she didn't, she wanted just to serve. That's all she wanted to do. And then finally she took prasadam and then of course soon after that the kid, another, there was another day, I think there was three days of activities and finally everyone went to their respective places after this wonderful festival. This festival is described in detail in Naratam Vilas. There's a beautiful book, please read it. It's by my god sister Sitala. You have that book? Yeah, I read it when it came, before it even was published. One of your associates here, her name was Adarya Chandrika. She had the manuscript even before it was published. She said, "Maraj, I got something special for you." I said, "What?" She said, "This is." A beautiful book in describing the glories of Naratam, written by Sitala, the wife of Hari Sari, who was the personal uh, assistant of uh, servant of, of Srila Prabhupada. So I remember reading it while I was in Croatia, and uh, when I was reading it, I was only reading one chapter a night because I didn't want to finish it. <laughs> Have you ever had that experience? You get a book and you don't want to finish it because it's so full of nectar? <laughs> yeah, that was my mood. So I would read one chapter a night and just get absorbed and then I would think, tomorrow I'm going to read again, yes. <laughs> I didn't want to finish the book and when I finished it I thought, oh, i got to read it again. <laughs> so it's full of nectar. And in that book, she describes this kirtan in great, great detail. It's really great, great, great detail. Finally, of course, there's many, many pastimes of Naratam. How he was preaching and making, you know, Brahmins into Vaishnavas. He was born in a Kayasta family. He was a Sudra, actually, by birth. But still, he became so exalted. But the, the local brahmanas, they became disturbed because he was making brahmanas into Vaishnavas. And they thought, who is this, you know, this, this Kayastra Sudra? Who does he think he is? You know, becoming the guru of the, the brahmanas. So he made one Ganga, 
Ganga Narayan Das, who was one of the chief brahmanas in the area, one of the best pundits among the brahmanas, he became a disciple of Narada. And the other devotees, other brahmanas got really upset. They went to the king and they start complaining to the king. You know, he's ruining the whole brahminical culture. We have to do something to stop him. Let us defeat him in an argument. So they made a plan. So the king thought it was a good idea. So they got one Kaviraj, whose name is Rupa, Rupa, Rupa Narayan Kaviraj. And uh, he was famous for uh, uh, debating. So along with the Brahmins, Rupa Narayan Kaviraj and the king, they were on their way to where Naratam was. The word got out that they were on their way. So two of the leading disciples of uh, Narata, one was Ganga Narayan, and the other one was uh, Ramachandra Kaviraj. They decided to meet the king and the assembly before they got to Narata. But they did it in the most interesting way. They dressed themselves and set up a stand of betel nuts and clay pots. One became a betel nut seller, and the other one became a clay pot seller. And they set up a stand along the side of the road. So when the king, along with the brahmanas and Rupert and Narayan came, uh, they said, well, let's get some betel nut and some pots. So they went, and when they start speaking to Ganga Narayan and uh, Ramachandra Kaviraj, they responded in perfect Sanskrit. And it was amazing. So the king was there. He was also wow, a betel nut seller and a pot, clay pot seller speaking perfect Sanskrit? <laughs> Who are you? We are disciples of Naratam Das Thakur. You have to debate us first before you debate our guru. So Rupa Narayan came up and he debated and they destroyed him. <laughs> And then the Brahmins were mortified. The king said, what is the use of going to speak, talk to Naratam? You can't even decide. You, if this is the disciples of Naratam. <laughs> so they gave up their idea <laughs> and went back. <laughs> and Naratam was preaching more and more. There are many wonderful stories. Of course, the Brahmin community still remained somewhat envious and inimical towards him. So I'll wind up tonight's talk with a little little pastime of how Naratam. At one time, of course, we sing that song. You sing it every day. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Doya Kodam Ode. What's the last line? Ha ha Prabhu Sri Acharyan. Huh? Sing it. Sia Charya Prabhu Srinivava Ramachandra Sangha Mange Das. So Ramachandra was a disciple of, um, he was a disciple of Srinivasa Charya actually, but he became good friends with Naratam Das Thakur. They developed such a, a, a intimate, loving exchange that it was described. It was like two two bodies in one soul, two souls in one body. They were inseparable. They had developed such a, a strong, loving friendships amongst each other. So, um, after some time, Ramachandra Kaviraj left the planet. And Naratam Das became silent. His heart was broken in separation. And he remained quiet. And, and he didn't preach after that. And then after some time, it was noted that Srinivas Acharya also departed. So the two dear personalities that were very dear to his heart left the planet. After some time, Naratam Das thought it was time to go. He meditated for a few weeks, we just chanted, didn't speak to anyone. But then he decided it was time to leave the world. So he told his devotees, prepare for my departure. 
So it was, I can't remember all the details, but in the ceremony for his departure, he was laying on a table and he had already left his body. And the ceremony was going on, glorifying his pastimes and his glories by his disciples. And he was laying there. At one point, the brahmanas, who were envious of him, they also came. And they started speaking in a negative tone. Now, at the, at the departure of a great soul, when people speak negative, that pollutes the whole ceremony. So they start saying, Ha, oh, now he is gone. Just see. You know, he was thinking he's such a great personality. But now he is, he is no longer. Now, Ganga Narayan, he heard that. He heard them speaking it, and he started praying to Naratam, Naratam, Naratam. Oh, Naratam, they're speaking so badly. Please do something. <laughs> so Naratam did. While he was laying on the table, a beautiful, he had a, he had a, a Brahmin thread, no, he had no Brahmin thread. But on his chest appeared a golden Brahmin thread automatically. And then he sat up. <laughs> and the Brahmins, when they saw he came back to life, they were, I don't know what they were, but they were just, <laughs> they were shocked. And then they realized that he was actually a great personality. So they surrendered and became his disciple. <laughs> So he stayed for a little while longer, but then it was time for him to go again. So he, he, he called for Ganga Narayan and one other devotee. I can't remember who it was. He said, come with me and bring a pot of warm milk with you. So they did, and they came to the banks of the Ganga. He said, I am going into the Ganga Please follow me. So they went, he went into the Ganga up to his waist and stand there. And then he said, take that pot of milk and put Ganga water inside the milk and mix it together. And then take that milk and Ganga water combination and sprinkle it on me. And don't stop. No matter what happens, don't stop. So while he was in the, in the Ganga, they started to throw the combination of Ganges water and milk on him. And every part of the body that it touched, that, body, that part of the body melted and turned into milk. Soon his whole body was gone, it just turned into milk and it merged into the Ganges. It was very difficult for them to do that, but that was his instruction. It is said that Naratam Das Thakur's service in the spiritual world, he is a very intimate manjari, and he cooks milk for Srimati Radharani and her associates like that. That is, that's, it was his internal mood. He would prepare nice milk for Radharani, because Radharani would always take hot milk every night. <laughs> So this is a little bit about the wonderful pastimes of Naratam Dasta. We can't imagine how great this personality is. He's not a, such a small personality. There are many great personalities, but he is one of the greatest of all. And Srila Prabhupada benedicted all of us by giving us the bhajans of Naratam Dasta Kaur, which many of them we sing. And the one we sing every day, what is that? So you go to Vandanam, yeah. And at the end he says, Lokanath Loke Rajivan. He's glorifying Lokanath Swami. That's when we say Lokanath Loke Rajivan. He's speaking about Lokanath Dasko Swami. And in that in that prayer and in all his songs, it is understood that the conclusion of the Vedic Siddhanta is found in all his writings and prayers. In other words, 
His songs are pure Vedas. <laughs> His songs are pure Vedas. And so he is glorified for his bhajans and of course for his amazing, amazing preaching. And he made so many people at that time Krishna conscious. And we left out a lot of stories of him, his trip to Ekachakra when he met, he, Lord, he saw Lord Balaram and Lord Nityananda personally, where he converted two young boys to become uh, great souls. They gave up their Shivite propensities and became great Vaishnavas. And one Dakoi, his name was Chandi, what was his name? Chandra, Chandra Roy. He was the king of all the Dakoites. He met Naratam, surrendered to Naratam, became a great devotee of the Lord. And on the instructions of Naratam, made all the other Dakoites who were who were under his uh, control into Vaishnavas. <laughs> I think Prabhupada did that with us. Some of us are still carrying some of those past remnants, but... <laughs> so Naratam Dastakor is such a amazing personality. I can't really fully honor his qualities is not possible. But you can see from some of these pastimes how great he was. So yesterday was his disappearance day. And uh, we should always remember him. He's a, he's a Mahaparush. He's a, a very, very exalted personality. And he came to assist Lord Chaitanya by revolutionizing the whole style of kirtan. And he actually took kirtan to another level. <laughs> so you can do a little research and find out more about his kirtan styles and some of the, the melodies that he introduced into kirtan. It's all available with a little research. <laughs> okay, so this is Naratam Das Thakur. So yesterday was his disappearance day. And this month is a series of great personalities who will be appearing throughout the month. And we should take an opportunity because there's one thing that's higher and more greater than worshiping the Lord. And that's worshiping the Lord's pure devotees. The Lord is more pleased and showers more blessings on those who worship his devotees than he does for those who worship him directly. So to worship and honor the great souls is the greatest of all services. <laughs> so we take, we take the opportunity in this month to, as much as we can, to remember and to speak about these great souls. And when we do, we also get their mercy, and by getting their mercy, we can also make advancement in our Krishna consciousness. Srila Naratam Das Thakur Ki Jai. If anybody wants to say anything, we can put a few minutes aside. If not, we'll see you all soon. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to speak on Naratam Das Thakur. Hare Krishna. <laughs>